All right, so in the last video, uh, I very briefly talked to you about the programs that we're going to be using. And although I don't want you to feel overloaded by uh, the, the programs that we're going to be using, or I don't want you to be overloaded now, let me just very quickly show you what they look like. So um, I'm just gonna go to my doc, and I, I already opened up Tarski's World, right? So you've seen that. Uh, Tarski's World is a program that we're gonna be using all semester long. What's great about Tarski's World is, among other things, um, it provides us with a very uh, restricted uh, language that allows us to start learning uh, about logic, uh, specifically logical relationships and the logical structure of sentences without being overloaded by, you know, just the sheer, seemingly, I should say, unlimited number of sentences in the universe, right? So what we get with Tarski's World is we get something like a, like a chessboard, right? Um, and, you know, it moves around and you can spin it one way or the other, but it's basically like a chessboard. And on this board, uh, you can put items. So anytime uh, you want to put an item, you will come over here to the upper left corner, you'll click New, and the default uh, block that shows up is a small cube, so cube, small, on the far left uh, side of the, uh, the board. And if you hit uh, new again, you get another small cube. Now notice a couple things. One is whichever block is the one that is darker or highlighted, that's the one that you're currently manipulating in some way, okay? In addition, notice that you have two cubes, here are the three possible objects. There is a tetrahedron, a cube, and a dodecahedron. So in Tarski's world, there are three possible objects, three possible shapes, and three possible sizes, small, medium, large. Notice that because this cube is the one that is currently highlighted, that's the one whose size we can change. In addition, there are six possible names. So let's suppose I name this cube A, but let's suppose I also want to name this cube C. It's kind of like my name, right? Mia is one name, but Somebody could also call me Gloria, if they wanted. I'm one object, I can take multiple names. What you can't do, however, is this, and this is interesting, we'll come back to this later. You cannot name multiple objects, or let me rephrase that, you cannot give multiple objects the same name. Once you've given a name, and you click on another object, right? So once you've given an object a name, and then you click on another object, notice the name that's in use is not available. Now, there are lots of people named Mia. I'm not the only Mia in the universe. But for the program to get us to think about the principle that there is one unique object that is identical with itself and nothing else, it's easy to say, oh, well, we just will show that by restricting the number of names that can be used for multiple objects. This will make more sense as we go forward, but this, like I said, is like an overview. Now, in the bottom window, notice that you have a bunch of symbols and letters. In the middle, you have a bunch of buttons with names. And then you have a bunch of evaluation um, and formatting uh, buttons. Short story is this. 
when we are learning uh, the version of the deductive system that's presented in Language Proof and Logic, we're going to be learning a brand new language. So this language is artificial like every language, um, and so it comes with uh, its own conventions. Now, some of the principles at work are not conventions. They're not, um, if you will, arbitrary. They are, uh, rather, um, considered to be uh, rules that are um, immutable within uh, the system of deduction that we learn. More on that later. For right now, let me just say that, remember we have three possible items, right? We have tetrahedra, cubes, and dodecahedra. If you want to say, for example, that uh, this cube is named A, you can certainly type the sentence, right? Uh, a is a cube, but what we're going to see when we learn the language of uh, uh, first order logic, we are going to instead use our button. You can type the word cube, but the nice thing about Tarski's world um, is that when you use the buttons, uh, you get uh, automatic grammar, if you will. You get the proper uh, formatting for the uh, language that we're learning. So we're told that we have a cube and its name is A. And then notice that there was some green highlighting going on. That was to show you that your formula is uh, well formed. In other words, the notation that's required is uh, in place. All right, so there's a separate uh, Tarski's World tutorial, but this gives you a, a basic idea of um, some of the ways that uh, we're going to be using Tarski's World. Now, uh, the second program that I want to show you is Fitch. And if you remember your days from um, geometry, then you'll know, <coughs> excuse me, you'll know how some of the basics of how Fitch works. You've got the same blocks language, you've got the same uh, buttons for symbols and, and um, letters, uh, but what you have is uh, in Fitch a proof system. So let's suppose that you have the following sentences. Uh, a is a cube, and then I'm going to add a premise after that. Uh, so sorry, proof, add a uh, premise. And then suppose that I say A is identical to B. Now I want to uh, draw an inference, so I'm going to add a step after. Notice the following. Let me go ahead and make all of this a uh, little bit darker. Um, so let's make the uh, font size larger. Let's make the uh, 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 typeface itself bold. And then we can also, where's darkened proof lines? I always forget. Here it is under window. All right. So Fitch is a program where uh, when you have two sentences or more, or uh, one sentence or no sentences, more on all that later, but when you have uh, some givens, as you have here, you, below what's called a Fitch bar, will draw an inference. In this case, I bet you know what the inference is. If A is a cube and A is identical to B, it follows that B is a cube. And then you'll notice over here to the right of your inference, there is... Um, the word rule and a question mark. Well, as we draw inferences, we are going to need to justify them, and we'll do that by way of rules. But we also need to cite lines. And we cite lines by highlighting them. Now, we're going to show our step numbers, 
And notice when we do that, the line numbers that we cite as the uh, sources for line number three, they show up uh, to the right of line number three. Again, this is a very cursory overview, but I just want you to see uh, a little bit of how we're going to work with these programs. And then the third program that we're going to use, and I've shown you now the programs in order of their of our usage. This is called the Bool program. And I'm not going to type anything. I just want to very quickly show you that once again, you've got the uh, symbols and letters, you've got the buttons, right? Um, and what we're going to be using Bool to do is to understand uh, a very specific way of thinking about truth and uh, when sentences are true, when sentences are false, when two or more sentences are equivalent to each other, that is, logically say the same thing, when uh, sentences are not equivalent, maybe they're contradictory, when one sentence does or does not follow one or more other sentences, and so forth. So that will be bool. And then when you... Uh, submit your homework, you're going to use the submit program, right? So you work your exercises in uh, Tarski's World, Fitch, or Bool, and then you use the submit program to uh, send your files in for grading. Now, what do I mean by send your files in for grading? Well, the submit uh, program, and again, there's a tutorial on this, but the submit program offers you a, uh, uh, basically, it, sorry, it functions, rather, as an email program. You attach files, you send the files to the grading program. Now, how do you attach files? Well, suppose that you want to save this untitled sentence uh, uh, file, you're going to either hit Command or Control S, or you're going to, going to go under uh, Save Sentences As, and then there will be a naming convention. You're going to save your files in a place where it's easy to access them, so that when you go into uh, Submit, you will be able to choose the files that you want. Again, there are more specific uh, video tutorials, one for each of the programs, but this is an overview just to kind of give you a sense of what we're going to be using in order to learn and practice logic and to submit uh, homework files.